In part one, the crime scene must be secured to prevent contamination and the altering of evidence for the crime committed on the premises. The entrance and exit points of all involved should be identified. A route should then be created for the investigation team that is away from the areas to limit disturbance of the scene, known as the common approach path. The scene investigators need to wear professional protective clothing, PPE, such as a scene suit over shoes and gloves, which reduces the possibility that they themselves might contaminate the scene and to protect themselves from potential hazardous substances. In part two, we use the zone method, which breaks the crime scene area into squares. We divided the room into four equal sections to examine it by an individual investigator. Our group used evidence markers to scale to show the approximate size of the objects. In part three, photographs should be taken directly at a right angle, eliminating probable distance distortions for clear visualization and each part of the evidence should be photographed with a scale to signify size without scale to show relationship with overall scene. The first step in sketching a crime scene is to define the boundaries of the sketch. These may be walls for an indoor sketch. Then we make sure the area within the boundaries include all permanent objects and evidence. Then we establish known points from which to measure the locations of objects and evidence. These points should be fixed. These can be walls or doors, indoor scenes. The walls or boundaries should be drawn first, leaving as much room as possible for the contents. If walls are used, their dimensions should be recorded. The measurements should be taken from the fixed points of pieces of evidence. The perfect final sketch is constructed of care and concern and drawn to scale. The legend must contain the scale and must reflect information contained with the rough sketch to be admissible evidence in court. To measure the location of one piece of evidence, we can use the rectangular method, triangle method, or baseline method. We use the triangle method because it's easier since our crime was committed indoors. The triangular method measures the distance of the object from two fixed points of known distance from each other. Steps for collecting evidence at a crime scene. The first step is to document and photograph the evidence. Is to properly secure the evidence by placing it in a paper bag or envelope. To close, seal, and tape the paper bag or envelope. Is to label the bag or envelope with the identifying information of the evidence. We wrote the case number, inventory number, and item description number of the crime, the location of the crime, who the evidence was recovered by, the suspect's name, the victim's name, and the type of offense. The last step for collecting evidence at a crime scene is that the examiner must place their signature and the date and time of the crime on the tape that seals the evidence envelope, making sure that it overlaps onto the envelope.